The Vision of William Ellis Foy, the Prophet in the 1800s. On the 18th of January, 1842, I met with the people of God in South Park St. Street, Boston, where the Christians were engaged in solemn prayer, and my soul was made happy in the love of God. I was immediately seized as the agonies of death, and my breath left me, and it appeared to me that I was a spirit separate from this body. I then beheld one arrayed in white raiment, whose countenance shone beyond the brightness of the stars, and a crown was upon his head which shone above the brightness of the sun. This shining one took me by my right hand and led me upon the bank of a river. In the midst was a mount of pure water. Upon the bank I beheld a multitude, both great and small. They were the living inhabitants of the earth. Soon all moved toward the west, walking on the water until we reached the mount. This became the separating line between the righteous and the wicked. The righteous crossed it, passed through the three changes. First, their bodies were made glorious. Second, they received pure shining garments. Third, bright crowns were given them. But when the wicked reached the spot where the righteous were changed, they cried for mercy and sank beneath the mount. The saints then passed on to a boundless plain, having the appearance like pure silver. Our guide then spake and said, This is the plain of paradise. This heavenly host was then divided into flocks, some exceeding large in number, others but small. In the middle of each was an angel. These angels' garments were pure and white unto each of them, was given a crown, shining with a great brightness. Their countenance were most lovely to behold, their wings like unto flaming fire beneath which were the saints, both small and great. The guide then said, These angels are they that have preached the gospel on the earth. I then beheld, as it were a great gate before me. The gate was so tall, the height thereof I was unable to see. Before the gate stood a tall and mighty angel, clothed in raiment pure and white. His eyes were like flaming fire, and he wore a crown upon his head, which lit it up this boundless plain. The angel raised his right hand and laid hold upon the gate, and opened it. And as it rolled upon its glittering hinges, he cried with a loud voice to the heavenly host, You're all welcome. Then the guardian angels in the midst of the saints struck a song of triumph, and the saints, both small and great, sang with loud voices and passed within the gate. And the guardian angels rose upon their glittering wings and vanished from my sight. The inside of the gate appeared like glittering diamonds. Beneath our feet was the appearance of pure glass. I then beheld countless millions of shining ones, coming with cards in their hands. These shining ones became our guides. The cards they bore shone above the brightness of the sun, and they placed them in our hands, but the names of them I could not read. These guides took us by the right hand and led us to a boundless place. Then I lifted up my eyes and looked above. No clouds or skies appeared, but there countless millions of bright angels, whose wings were like unto pure gold, and they sung with loud voices while their wings cried, Holy, Holy. I then beheld an innumerable multitude arrayed in white raiment, with cards upon their breasts, and unto each was given a crown of brightness. The guide spake, saying, These are they which have passed through death. There was arrayed before me in the spirit a innumerable multitude, which had not passed through death. Their crowns were like the brightness of the stars and in their right hand they held cards. I then saw an individual which had passed through death. Her brightness was beyond the expression of mortals, and at her right side stood a guardian angel. The angel's raiment was like pure gold, and its wings like flaming fire. As she passed me, she cried with a lovely voice, I am going to the gate to meet my friends. An angel then appeared flying through the mist of this boundless place, and came to the spirit of those that had not passed through death, and cried with a loud voice, saying, This is my mother. He then became her guide. 
I beheld in the midst of this boundless place a high mountain like unto pure silver. It appeared perfectly round, and although I was unable to see through it, yet my vision extended around it. Around this mountain was a space in which stood no being. But after this vacant circle stood, as it appeared to be, a choir of angels. And as far as my sight could extend, throughout this boundless place stood the countless millions of the righteous. And oh, the singing no mortal can describe. It appeared to me the angels next to the circle around about the mountain, with loud voices struck a lovely song and then ceased. The saints next to them caught the strand, and with voice yet more loud repeated it. Thus it echoed and re-echoed until it had been sung by all the saints, and then it ceased. And then again the angels sang. At the right side of the mountain appeared a mighty angel, with raiment like unto burnishing gold. His legs were pillars of flaming fire, his countenance like the lightning, and his crown gave light to this boundless place. And those that had not passed through death could not look upon his countenance. I then beheld upon the side of this mountain letters like pure gold, which said, The Father and the Son. Directly under these letters stood the mighty angel, whose crown lit up this, the place, and all the heavenly hosts worshipped at his feet, round about the mountain. This mighty angel then raised his right hand, which appeared like a flaming sword, and all the multitude of those that had not passed through death were caught up to the top of the mountain. And there was a large book opened, and their names came up out of the book in the form of cards, which were stamped upon their foreheads. We then stood again upon this pure sea of glass before the mountain, and our bodies be had become like transparent glass. But the being that was within the mountain, I was unable to behold. While I was gazing upon the glories before me, a great voice spake in the mountain, and the place was mightily shaken. And the countless multitudes of saints and angels bowed at the feet of the mighty angel and worshipped him, crying with a loud voice, Hallelujah! And then every voice was hushed, and the heavenly host remained bowed before the angel in solemn silence. And not was heard save the trembling of the place caused by the voice of him who spake in the mount. I then beheld this lower world, wrapped as it were in rolling mountains of flame. And in this fire I saw a countless multitude crying for mercy. They appeared to be the age and those who had come to the years of understanding. Their cries came up before the mountain, while all the heavenly hosts were bowed in solemn stillness. The voice from the mountain spake again, and all the saints and angels arose, and with loud voices cried, Amen. I then began to converse with my guide, and inquired, why there was no mercy for those whom I had seen in distress? He answered, The gospel has been preached unto them, and the servants have warned them, but they would not believe. And when the great day of God's wrath comes, there will be no mercy for them. I then beheld in the middle of this boundless place a tree, the body of which was like unto transparent glass, and the limbs were like transparent gold, extending all over this boundless place. On every branch of the tree were small angels standing. There was an innumerable multitude of them, and they sung with loud voices, and such singing was not been heard on this side of heaven. This tree was also clothed in light proceeding from the mighty angel. Beneath this tree, standing on the sea of glass, where the countless millions of the righteous arrayed in white raiment with crowns on their heads and cards upon their breasts, and in the multitude I saw that I knew while they were living upon the earth, and they were all singing with loud voices and lifting up their glittering hands, plucking the fruit from the tree. The fruit appeared like clusters of grapes and pitchers of pure gold. With a lovely voice, the guide then spoke to me and said, Those that eat of the fruit of this tree return to the earth no more. I raised my hand to partake of the heavenly fruit that I might no more return to the earth. But at last, I immediately found myself again in this lonely veil of tears. William Foy had another vision, a vision after this. This vision apparently it lasted 12 hours long in which he gave so much detail. 
But he had another vision after this. And this vision went like this. It appeared to me that I was a spirit separate from this body, standing upon the earth alone. No other being appeared to be with me. The earth had the appearance of a place perfectly level. The sun shone forth in its splendor, as it naturally does at noonday. I then beheld the cloud gently rising out of the west, which came up and covered the sun, so that it was darkened, and the whole heavens became like sackcloth. Then something beyond the expression of mortal man burst forth from the heavens, from the south even unto the north. It was like a flaming bar of fire, and immediately after something appeared which it is impossible for me to describe. I then beheld innumerable multitudes coming from the four quarters of the earth and were assembled before this bar, and there stood a solemn silence while paleness gathered on all the countenances. Immediately they were caught up to this bar, and the bodies of the saints were changed, becoming like transparent gold. And they were clothed in light and shining garments, and crowns of brightness were placed upon their heads, and shining cards upon their breasts, and singing sweetly they passed through the bar of fire. But the wicked were unable to pass. The world beneath appeared to be wrapped in darkness and fire. And to this the wicked sunk from my sight, crying for mercy. I beheld mothers with their infants in their arms coming to the flaming bar. The bodies of the infants became like transparent gold, and on wings of flaming fire they passed the bar, singing with lovely voices, and the unholy mothers crying for mercy would sink below. I then beheld an innumerable multitude coming up from the waters, an innumerable multitude coming up of the earth, arrayed in white raiment with cards upon their breasts, and singing with loud voices they pass this bar, and receive crowns of glory upon their heads. I then beheld a multitude coming up of the earth, and some of them I knew whose name were enrolled in the church books on earth, some of whom I had seen communing with the saints of different orders, and some which had professed to be preachers of the gospel. Although they had high professions, yet they were not found worthy but cried for mercy and sunk with those who had blasphemed. As we passed the bar, we entered upon the boundless place, which was lit up with a great brightness. Near the place through which we passed, I beheld a mighty angel clothed in pure white raiment, having a crown of brightness on his head. He appeared to be gazing through the bar, and his eyes like lamps of fire were fixed with steadfastness upon the earth. He stood with his right foot placed before him as though walking, and his object appeared to, to be to reach the earth, but three steps remained for him to take. Against his breast and across his left hand was as it were a trumpet of pure silver, and a great and terrible voice came from the midst of the boundless place saying, The sixth angel hath not yet done sounding. Behind the angel I beheld countless millions of bright chariots. They had the appearance of pure gold, and there were perfectly square. Each chariot had four wings like flaming fire. And while I was beholding, one of the chariots arose upon its wings of fire, and the angel followed after the chariot. And the wings of the chariot and the wings of the angel cried as with one loud voice, saying, Holy, Holy. I watched the chariot listening to the lovely sound of the wings. It passed toward the earth, and there appeared a spirit arrayed in white raiment, as it were, standing upon a mountain. And there was giving him a crown of brightness, and he stepped into the chariot with the angel, and in a moment he was in this boundless place. Although he shone with great brightness, yet the individual I knew, it was the one referred to by the witness who said, I see the chariot coming. He departed this life, and just two weeks after, I saw him in vision, and then saw in the midst of the place an innumerable multitude, arrayed in white raiment, standing in a perfect square, having crowns of unfading glory upon their heads. They were of the size of children, ten years of age, and they sung a song which the saints and angels could not sing. In the midst of the, this boundless place, there was a river of pure water, and on each side of the river countless millions of angels stood, with crowns of brightness upon their heads. 
they had in their hands cups like pure gold, and were bowing down and partaking of the water of the river, singing with loud and lovely voices, and worshiping him whose crown gave light to this boundless place. Then came one unto me clothed in white, whom I call my guide. He led me to a place like unto a narrow door. The first which I beheld was a mighty angel, upon the right hand, having a large book upon before, open before him. Also on the left, another with a book open before him. My guide then spake to me, saying, They that repent of their sins on earth are blotted out of the book on the left, and recorded on the right. I then beheld angels ascending and descending to and from the earth. They bore tidings to the recording angels. My guide now informed me what I must do, saying, Thy spirit must return to yonder world, and thou must reveal those things which thou hast seen, and also warn thy fellow creatures to flee from the wrath to come. I then answered him, saying, how can I return to yonder world? He answered me, I will go with thee and support and help thee to declare these things unto the world. Then I answered the angel, I will go.